Thank you, Sean. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Um, this is the March 25th meeting of the elementary school building committee. And my the first order of business is I need to call out the names of the committee members. I see we have a quorum and as others join us, I will also make sure they can hear and be heard. So I'm going to um, just uh, announce the names and just indicate whether you can hear. Sean? Okay, we didn't hear you, Sean, but. Yes, I can hear, sorry. Okay, that's okay, Mike? Present. Uh, Paul? Present. Jonathan? Here. Ben? Uh, I am here. Hi, Rupert? I am here. Angelica? Here. Simone? Here. Okay, seeing we have a quorum, I will call the meeting to order. And uh, Margaret Wood has joined us. Now, Margaret, I know you said you came in on your phone, so I'm not sure whether you're gonna be able to show your screen, but I can just announce the agenda if that's easier for you. Yeah, <clears throat> um, if you give me just a second, um, I my computer finally opened <laughs> and I'm gonna rejoin and pull up the agenda, okay? Okay, so while, while Margaret's rejoining, um, the as people saw from the posted agenda, she's going to introduce the day with the agenda and also the outline of what this next step has in it in terms of the ingredients of the report. And then we will go to Donna where she will be leading us through literally next steps um, and where we are. And in, in this process, I want to assure everyone that we have been collecting questions as they've come up, questions and or comments, and we'll try to, um, Donna is going to address some of them, but we're collecting them both from public comments and from written comments that people have done along the way, and we will try to um, speak to those um, in terms of either we're ready to give answers or when we will have answers to them. So. Um, Margaret, I'm going to turn it over to you just to show the agenda um, yeah. and then to talk a little bit about this preferred schematic report, this the stage we're in. Yeah. Can everybody see the agenda? Yes. So apologies, my computer was not, <laughs> obviously hadn't had its coffee this morning. So um, yeah, so we're going to talk through the preferred schematic report. Um, we're going to, Danisco is going to run through their next design steps and how input will be provided. Um, the um, MSBA is reviewing our um, documents, the PDP, and uh, they were not, they were not able to get the comments back to us for today's meeting, but I expect they'll come next week. We have- Hi, um, this is Joyce for Bob. Can you see me in the office? We have two weeks to turn them around. So I expect we'll have a chance to review them with you um, at the April 8th meeting. Um, and then um, we also have on the agenda, uh, the sort of going back and looking again at the criteria. Um, and if it makes sense to simplify the evaluation matrix, voting on the minutes um, from the last, um, uh, submission from the last meeting and um, which include the vote to submit the PDP and then talking through the net, net zero and the upcoming timeline. So that is, that's the agenda. Thank you, Margaret. So, so go ahead. No, go ahead. Um, so Kathy, you wanted me to talk a little bit about what is in the preferred schematic report. Um, yes, and as I think everyone saw, I posted the actual MSBA feasibility study and flagged the part of it, which is the PSRR. Um, so it lays out exactly what we're gonna have to produce, but I thought it would just be useful because one of the things I saw is some of the parts of this we 
going a long way to preparing in this first stage in the preliminary design. So we have, yeah. So here is the preferred solution document. Um, let me just get to the beginning. So final evaluation of alternatives. Um, you know, this is where there's going to be a detailed analysis that you all will be involved in scoring for the um, <clears throat> of the options that are on the table. So the six options. Um, I guess there's actually really there's four options because we're not doing the renovation option. So renovation in addition or new construction on the, each of the two sites. Um, this, you've kind of seen this already, the summary of preliminary design pricing. Um, if you've looked at the PDP, you saw that what we was provided in the PDP, what the MSBA is looking for is a simplified version of this, but Danisco went quite far with this at the PDP level. So this will be a, um, <clears throat> this table is what we give back to them that outlines cost. And then um, typically, as you can see here in this table, the preferred solution is identified in bold. Um, and then there is a summary, which I'm not gonna go into in detail of um, sort of updating the materials that were in the PDP. Um, I think one item that's important here is um, <clears throat> We have to provide uh, a sustainability scorecard, which you know in this case will be more detailed than what the MSBA usually gets. Usually, they're looking for a demonstration of how <clears throat> the project will achieve lead silver um, or uh, meet uh, the uh, message the Massachusetts chips. And then there are all the kinds of drawings in addition, which support. Um, the developed design of the project, building plans, site plans, and then <clears throat> a budget document, which is more detailed. Um, in the in the PDP, there's you know basically a statement about the municipality's um, financial uh, condition and their their plans for financing the project. This budget will go into a lot of detail. Um, about how the project is going to be paid for and what the tax impact is. And I'm not going to dig into this other than to say <clears throat> there's also a more detailed project schedule. Um, if you had a chance to look at the PDP, you saw um, the kind of one page schedule that um, we, the answer provided that sort of explains the overall timeline. And that, that's kind of the high level summary. Danisco team, is there anything that I missed that we should talk about? No, I, I mean, well, so no, that's, that's fine. And then the question I think what is in everyone's mind is how do we get there? And, yes. and what are the decisions that need to be made and when, et cetera, right? Exactly. Yeah. Let's transition. And I just, just want to recognize that Allison has joined us. And Allison, um, can you hear me? And I just and Tammy has joined us. So I just want to make sure everyone can hear and be heard. Allison? Yes, I can hear you. And Tammy? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, welcome. So Donna, I think we're turning it over to you. Okay, great. And so this is a fluid process, and we appreciate everyone's comments and extremely thoughtful and helpful and it helps us understand what's important to you as a community so we're not going to have all of the answers today or next week but we want to continue to receive them and as we go through the options obtain more information um, start shaping the each option or alternative that's when we'll be able to really probably provide you more concrete answers to all of your questions. Some of them we can answer now, some we'll answer next week, and then others will probably be answered in sequence as the concepts are developed. Um, so for next week or for the next steps, we're still recommending let's meet every two weeks. We'll have plenty to talk about. We wanna continue our conversations about NZE. Um, I just wanna clarify uh, for Mar what Margaret said about what we need to submit for MSBA. MSBA is just looking 
they want to see how we're going to achieve their requirements, whether it's their minimum requirements, which is being certified for either New England chips or lead. I guess we haven't yet decided if we're doing chips or leads. We've all made an assumption, but we should probably finalize that. But um, in order to receive two additional reimbursement points from MSBA, it's not that we have to achieve silver, but we have to achieve an additional, I believe it's 20% uh, energy savings for the project. And then you have other requirements, but you don't have to achieve silver, but you have to achieve some of what's important to MSBA and obviously the community, which is energy savings. So we'll continue to have those uh, net zero discussions and some of the options may also inform what, what the final solution is for the um, NZE for the project. The, the more important thing, and again, you know, starting out with the program at the very beginning, it's how the program is going to shape the building, both renovation, addition, and new, and then how the building is shaping the site, but each site is unique. So also, how does the site inform the building? We wanna talk about traffic and if there are any major impacts to either site and how that might help inform your decision. And then ultimately taking all of that information with all of your questions and our responses to those, but then we start really looking at the evaluation of the criteria and what makes the most sense. Um, there've been some conversations, you know, maybe and add reno, we can eliminate the option for addition renovation on either or both sites. And when might that occur? And I think it's premature for us to say when that occurs. Our next steps, and we're working with Mike after this um, meeting to talk about what is most important for the program, right? The ideal spatial relationships and adjacencies, maximizing time on learning, creating a community area of the building that can be used for the community use after hours, making sure that the other um, parts of the building, the educational components can be um, properly and safely closed off to the community, how the building informs the site and how the building shapes to maximize our net zero goals. So it's a little hard to say exactly when these decisions will be made, but it will be fluid and they will just come up very clearly as we go through the next steps. Um, so since we haven't really, we haven't finished the organization of the building, which will help the committee decide what options look better. You know, a new building on Wildwood might look different than a new building on Fort River just because of the way the site's laid out, the way the current buildings are there, and same thing with the renovation addition and the way traffic flows through. So, so what we're saying is um, we're gonna ask to be a little patient because we're not gonna have exact answers just now, but we will have plenty of time for input and for you to respond to what we present over the next eight weeks. Margaret, I don't know if you have anything to add to that. No, <clears throat> other than just to remind everybody of the overall timeline, which is that, um, so this submittal that we just made, um, the, the PDP preliminary design program, um, you know, had a bit of a, I would say floating, the, the deadline that we had was self-imposed. There has to be a certain amount of space between this submittal and the PSR submittal in order to give the MSBA time to review. Um, but, you know, basically they're reviewing documentation of the sort of ground rules that we're operating under. Um, the PSR submittal is, is directly linked to an MSBA approval. So we have a hard, a hard deadline for that to submit it on June 27th. And then the MSBA votes, I remember the date is about six weeks later, there's a board vote to approve it. And um, I think it's also important to say that there is staff review um, during this process. So um, once we're on the MSBA board agenda, 
they're not going to not vote for the project. They do typically have some questions in the board meeting setting. Um, and what um, we will need to do as a next step is to sort of lay out the same process for committee engagement. We haven't done that yet for the next couple of months. So that's that's the the sort of next milestone that we're headed towards in terms of time frame. Thank you. Kathy, I think um, we, we are prepared to answer some questions that have come up and we, we can walk through some of those. And I believe, are we creating a frequently asked question document that we can continue to add to as the questions come up that seem appropriate? You know, it's not a one-off question, but that really are helpful for, for everyone to kind of keep track of. Um, there, there's a frequently asked question on the website now, Donna, but it's very general. You know, it was the lead in before we started, but the answer is yes. If we have frequently asked questions and we have answers to them, we will do that. Um, so I, I have started drafting something on what is net zero and be different pieces of it, but there is a meeting, uh, the committee should know there's a meeting next week at one o'clock. We did set that up. We will be getting more information to actually show people you know, what the energy savings are and what our choices are. So as you, as we have these questions, Donna, we can, we will collect them and create a very specific that these questions have been asked about the process or these questions, when will we know what pieces of information? Absolutely. And we'll put it up on the website. So yeah, Margaret, I think one of one of the things that's been so great about the questions that have come forward um, from the committee, as well as the questions we've heard in public comment is, you know, the, these, these are the, if, if you're asking the question, you're not, you're not the only one. So, you know, we're, we're, this is why I'm sort of collecting them and uh, with Kathy and the Danisco team's help, trying to make sure we, we capture them and then we sort of provide written responses as well as the discussion in this meeting. So Donna, maybe if you go into a few of them and then um, what we can share um, and send it out to everyone and, and post it on thing is the questions we've collected so far um, so that people understand that they're, they're, it's being registered. It's not just going out into the ozone area. And um, you know, I think we had quite a few uh, questions that came up. I know Phoebe's not here, but she had some on, mm -hmm. on the cost estimates and on what you could and couldn't divide and when would we know different things. So, and, and I want to make sure that everyone here today, last time we met was we were getting this volume of the PDP. Um, and if to the extent people went back and read it and have any questions now, having read that document about, you know, we said this here, we said that there, what does this mean? Um, either during the meeting or sending those in is encouraged. I mean, it was a big document with a lot of information in it. So I'm, I'm turning it back over to you, Donna. Yeah. And I'm turning it over to Tim. <laughs> Tim. Yeah, great. Sure. Um, I'm gonna share just the site plans to put up for reference if that's okay. And then there's a few questions that we've selected that speak to the general issues um of where we are now and then we can just describe the questions as we will answer them going forward um, so here is the wildwood site um one of the questions that was asked um and and we we spoke to it somewhat in in the presentation is whether the second curb cut and access point to the site would be included or was included with the prices that we provided with the PDP? And the answer is it was not. Um, so we are looking at the feasibility of creating a second curb cut and what that would mean in terms of site access and uh, analyzing the absolute requirement for it with our traffic engineer. And as we study that further, um, if it's viable, it will absolutely be included with the next cost estimate that is um, going to be part of the PSR, but as for PDP, it was not there. 
Um, another question was, can the field costs associated with Fort River be separated from the building um, so that everyone could understand what that cost is? And that will be separated um, absolutely for the next round of estimates. And we also note that we have to have a conversation with the school department, parks and recs, uh, to make sure that we have those spaces programmed exactly the way that they should be. Um, as we have noted that they were assumed to be a replacement in kind uh, and improved so that they could be more useful. Um, we just wanna confirm all of those assumptions. And uh, when we do, that will affect the cost. Um, there were also questions about whether or not some of the improvements that we talked about for a new building at Fort River would apply to a renovation addition, essentially bringing the building up. Um, just to be clear, we would not be moving the existing buildings, but there are certainly means that we have available in terms of providing the same level of protection from groundwater, whether it's a vapor barrier and water barrier under the slab where it's changed, uh, a topping coating that is waterproof or drainage system within the soil around the building. There are things that we could do to make a renovated building just as good as a building in terms of water infiltration from the site. Um, another logistics question that we got on Wildwood was, is there enough room? It's a, it's a smaller site. And the answer is yes, absolutely. We've done similar size buildings on much smaller sites. That's not to say that the smaller the site is, the more complicated the phasing and the more challenging it is for the general contractor or construction manager. But there's no question that the building can be built on this site safely, even with an operating school sharing the site. Um, another question is, is there an equal amount of outdoor learning space and play structures, playground, play equipment between the two sites? Um, yes, it was carried equally. Um, that's not to say that there are different opportunities on the two sites in terms of what can happen, but uh, in terms of what was carried with the PDP, they were equal numbers. And as we develop the program, for what actually happens on the sites in terms of outdoor learning and recreation, those numbers will be adjusted. Um, we also got a question on the cost of the photovoltaics that were included in the PDP. For each option, we included the same number um, and someone astutely pointed out that you will have different energy consumption based on the different mechanical system and building that you choose. Uh, and so there will be a variation in size and therefore cost of the PV array. And we will be talking about that on Tuesday at one actually in the net zero meeting. So um, we do have updates on that already. Um, and then we've had a series of questions on the test te te technical aspects of um, all of the ground improvement, dewatering, stormwater management at Fort River. Um, and then we will ad be addressing those essentially as we develop the sites. Um, we have, as Donna mentioned, meetings later today that we'll talk about programming, which will affect the layout of the building, the shape of the footprint, all of that has to happen before we can really lay out and get into the details. I mean, some of the questions are will the soil have to be improved and do we know exactly how much? Uh, the answer is there will be further testing. At this point, we've only performed a few test pits to see what's there. Once we know where the building is and the shape of the building, there will be further studies that will tell us exactly how much um, soil improvements and what the foundation conditions will be going forward. So that is a selection of the questions that we can answer definitively now and then as we go through the options and develop the schemes and plans we will uh, be keeping track of all of the questions that we've asked and try to answer them uh, to the extent possible as we present. Great, thank you. Thank you very much. 
I just want to look to the committee whether there are any follow on questions to those answers um, or uh, I'm not seeing any hands raised. You know, I know one question, Tim, that had to do with the size of the site that I think you'll be addressing is um, if you imagine a construction crew coming on site, is there enough room at Wildwood and enough room at Fort River to not have to take everything down and put everything up again? Um, you know, whether it's called staging, I'm not sure what the, the formal is. Um, so you'll be addressing that as you start to talk about what can go where? Um, we will, and, and if it is a renovation addition option where that addition ends up being all, all of those pieces, and, and if it's a new building where the new building ends up on the site, if it's tucked into the hill a bit more, that frees up a little more flat area. But um, yes, uh, it, it will be a, a, a lot of moving parts over um, a long construction duration. And um, as, as we develop the designs, we will certainly talk about what can happen when and what there's room. But in general, I mean, we have done similar size buildings on sites that are half this size. So we, we can be confident that there is room. It's just a question of, you know, making sure that everything is coordinated. Any other questions? You know, is um, there, I will send after this, um, we just settled on a date, but on at, for one o'clock next Tuesday is when we'll be getting information about ground source heat pumps versus air source heat pumps, initial costs, lifetime costs, and I'm not sure what else, but we are also, they've been gathering information on the current cost of operating the buildings with the electrical use, the oil use, and the gas use, because um, there's, there's potential for significant savings, um, whichever direction we go um, when I was looking at the numbers. Um, and Mike just nicely put together the budget for the 2023 schools and lays out for both Port River and Wildwood how much we're spending now. And it's uh, it adds up between the two buildings to $350,000 for electrical heat, electrical and heat. So it's, it's a substantial amount of money that's an annual cost. That, that's one of the issues we'll be talking about on Tuesday as part of what the design of this building will be providing to the town of Amherst and to the students and the teachers. It'll be better heated, better cooled with more light in it. Um, but next week, I think it's gonna be very technical. So I'm not seeing any other questions on, um, Angelica has her hand up, Angelica. Um, I'm just trying to recall from last of the, the um, images that we saw last time. And I know that there was a lot of images about what's underground at the two different schools and sort of like the um, differences in amount of already existing electrical and, and, and gas and pipes and things. So I was just wondering about any sort of comparative cost differences that that would go into the final design in terms of like what might, what can't be moved and not moved, what's more underground in one area and not underground in the other area. That's one question. And the second question I had is about costs for modular classrooms. I think before you mentioned that the MSB, it doesn't um, reimburse for that. And so I'm just wondering about, about costs that might go into the price of like still keeping, if it's in, you know, depending on what it is, but still keeping schools going, um, whether it's in a modular classroom or in existing classrooms. So um, why don't I start with the, the modular piece and um, maybe Janisco can comment if they've, if they've really started to dig into this about the utilities. So um, I think this is a, an important touch point. One of the things that I think um, is embedded in the approach, the design approach that Janisco is taking is that they are leaving, whichever site they're on, they're leaving the existing building in place and therefore preserving the operations of the school and um, therefore making sure that um, modular classrooms are, are not needed for the school to operate going forward. And that is, is 
really great approach um, because um, modular classrooms are expensive. Um, typically, they're temporary and um, they go away at the end of the project. So you don't get any sort of long-term value from them. And perhaps most importantly, the MSBA won't reimburse on modular classrooms. So that sort of embed, approach that is embedded, but I don't think we've actually spoken about that value directly is, um, you know, is I think really a huge piece of, you know, finding the best value option. So does anybody on the Dinesco team, I don't know how much you dug into the utility challenges, um, but does anybody yeah. want to take on that question? I, I just, um, I'll, let, I'll let Tim jump in on that, but I, I just wanted to add um, just to emphasize, Angelica, that this that would apply for a renovation addition or new construction. So we would sequence a renovation addition in such a way that we would um, construct the addition and then we could move the students, right? Say quad by quad or grade by grade and then we kind of move through the entire building so that that the construction duration is larger because you're not doing it all at once. It's going to be done in phases, but um, that that's how we've started to think about what goes into the addition in order for this to be a, a sincerely um, viable option. And then the only other component to that is we're anticipating that the sixth graders will be out of the school be, before we go to um, into construction. So that helps a little bit but all of these factors will go into it. And to echo what Margaret says, um, it's kind of like dirt. No one likes to pay for dirt. It's, it's a lot of money you'll never really see, but we always end up paying a lot of money for dirt um, or what goes into the site, but even more so with the portable classrooms because typically you would lease them, they go away, they're in the way, they take up space on the site that we need, as you can see for, for all of the other activities for construction. So. Uh, whenever absolutely possible, we stay far away and we believe that we can do that here. Go ahead, Tim. Um, we have started to look at uh, where the utilities are and what coordination will be required with the project. Uh, with either project, uh, there's gonna be utility work on site. Uh, one minor difference between the projects is that the utilities for the um, middle school come through the site for Wildwood um, from Strong Street. So um, there's a little bit extra coordination that would have to happen, but um, in general, uh, the level of complication and coordination between the sites is similar. Sean. Um, how, how essential is the second curb cut for the Wildwood project? And I guess have we as a are you recommending that we do pursue the second curb cut? I think it was mentioned in the traffic study. Um, I guess for a school this size with these many students, have we decided we are going to do that since you, you mentioned including it in the cost estimate or is that still something we need to discuss? Um, that is something that we are going to study as we analyze the sites moving forward. You are increasing the population. So traffic is only going to get more congested than it currently is. And the existing conditions report that we have from our traffic engineer says that, and I'm sure everyone who's been there has observed that there is a backup on Strong Street. Um, so um, on the site itself, it, it works well currently, um, uh, but there will be more students. And then another aspect to just whether or not it would improve circulation, which it would, to add a second curb cut and make it better, not worse, it would have to be a minimum separation. The distance between the two curb cuts is critical. And so the, the current one is all the way to the west on the site. And as you go to the east, the grades get um, particularly steep. So um, you might get to a point where you're not far enough away to have a meaningful impact and possibly make it worse. And then you've already gotten to the point where it's so costly because of the grades that it doesn't make sense. So that's what we're gonna have to um, way moving forward. Okay, thank you. Can I, I, I just want to follow up on that a little. Um, 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 Paul, Paul, I know, said he was going to have to leave early, but to, to the extent um, at either Wildwood or Fort River, 
you want to minimize the the traffic flow out onto the street if the if you would you be talking to the 10 engineers so um people in Amherst will laugh at this because our our head of DPW likes to think about roundabouts but whether there was a way of changing the way the exit from Wildwood intersects with Strong Street so that you're always turning right so there's a roundabout there or over at Fort River I think the exit from Fort River when people are leaving if they want to turn left is into a traffic flow. So will part of what you're looking for is solutions for that moving moving traffic on and off the site? Absolutely. I mean, uh, there are multiple ways to control traffic. It could be signage and, and controlling behavior rather than changing the geometry of the intersections. And we'll be working with our engineer and, and TPW to get to the, the best solution that we can. And, and Kathy, there's no one answer. Uh, we've yep. actually done it multiple ways. We we did one project. They completely changed. Uh, like they sort of had a little roundabout. They they re, they redid everything. It wasn't. And if once so the only other consideration, and Margaret can chime in, is there may be some improvements that could be done outside of the project because we have limits of work with our project. So depending on what the answers are and what the solutions are, that's a conversation to be had. There may be just some recommendations, even if we aren't at that site that the town may wanna consider going forward as well. So we've done significant changes such as putting in new lights or changing um, an intersection down the street. And we've done things as minimally as just putting signs out and trying to manage traffic um, on the site. And then, and then, you know, our goal is to get all as many cars as possible queuing on the site, which would help mitigate some of the issues down the street. So there's going to be a whole variety of options depending on where we put the building, how much, how many cars we can get on the site, which will reduce, you know, the backup, et cetera. So similar to what we were saying earlier, this is sort of going to be a fluid conversation as, as we look at all of the options, but we will be, our um, PAR engineering is looking at all of the considerations and where your pressure points are now and how a new school or additional students may impact that. Thank you. Any other questions as of now? And I, I guess one, when I have Donna, um, I started to ask it just before we went live, although we were live. Um, I think it would be helpful, at least it would be helpful for me when you come, when we meet again on April 8th, if you can kind of lay out timelines for, to the extent you can lay out what we're going to be seeing when, so that we know how we get to a decision of a referred um, in any in any way that makes sense to you, because we've got this short span in my mind of a few meetings in April, a few meetings in May, and then by June, we need to be down to, from four down to one. Um, so just, just laying it out in some way in a document or on a chart on, on what you think we're gonna be able to do by when. Um, and if it's, everything is interactive, that's okay. I just need to, I, I, I'm a, a step-by-step -step way, I think. Um, so that I just think that would be useful to the extent you're ready to do that on the next meeting. Um, I'm looking around to see if there are other questions. Um, I don't see any. So I wanna make sure if people did read the PDP and have the kind of questions you had, Angelica, that you just send them in. Um, and and put them in a, I didn't understand what's underneath Wildwood compared to what's underneath Fort River, how much each of these are challenges in terms of water levels or ground levels. Um, and so I encourage people to send those in. And then we, we had discussed coming back to the minutes of last week 
um, I'm not necessarily taking these things in the two orders, but taking a vote on the minutes. I want every to assure everyone that when the minutes went in, the town clerk certified them. The key thing was that we took a vote on the minutes. But if, if people see anything in the minutes or are ready to take a vote today, one of the things Rupert suggested is that we, when we have a key vote, we at least vote to approve the, the minutes. And so I would like to do that for this set of minutes um, before I go to the design criteria. Are people ready to take a vote on the minutes? Do I hear a motion to take? I'll make a motion to vote on the minutes. <laughs> This is Rupert, I'll second. Second. Are any, any questions or comments on them? Okay, then I'm just gonna do a roll call vote. So we will record that we voted on this set of minutes. And I'll start with Rupert. Rupert, aye. Tammy. Aye. Angelica. Aye. Jonathan. Yes. Allison. Yes. Mike. Yes. Ben. Yes. And Simone. Yes. Okay, it's unanimous for the people who are here. Sean says yes too. Oh, oh, yes, Kathy's a yes. Uh, Sean, I miss Sean. Yes. Hi, Sean. I, miss, I started in the wrong corner. So the other thing I wanted to revisit, I took a look at the criteria and um, Angelica for you, since you joined us later, you know, and we had a set of criteria to be able to compare the sites choices on some of the initial criteria. If you looked at them compared to the 165, the small school were on there because that school didn't work as well. So I took a look at the rows and I thought it would be a good idea to revisit them to get down to a smaller set that um, will help differentiate between these four. And I don't have a suggestion of exactly what to do yet, but I started looking at them and some of the rows seem to be duplications of each other where we talk about outdoor space in more than one part, an education program and other. So I wanted to see if anyone would be interested in working with me to narrow down the list. Um, and if, or you could delegate it to me and I would come with a suggested shorter list in terms of criteria with, with some rationale why, because I think that will be helpful as uh, Donesco starts to prepare information for us. It may be that all four look pretty equal when we look across some of the rows, but, it, but to the extent we can, we'd like to see one looks better on this, one looks better on that. So we would get some guidance so that we would have criteria that didn't have everything look the same, everything be a yes. Um, Kathy, so, I have, if it's helpful, I have yeah. the last time, the last time we looked at this was January 5th, I believe, and the, it was in the January 5th meeting packet. I can pull it up if anybody, if you, anyone wants to look at it. And at the very least, Angelic, I can send this to you so you know what it is we're talking about. I did, I did send it out again, Margaret. So okay. Yeah, I, I sent it out as an Excel sheet and I, I think that would be fine. The, the one thing that we did that stepped from that first one was, was a suggested way of rating them. So we had a color mm -hmm. scheme that yeah. ranged from very good to pretty good to not so good. Um, so I wasn't gonna propose to change that right now. Okay. So, so I didn't know whether anyone came with comments now, but what I was gonna suggest is a way of coming back to the next meeting with starting with that, but then a comparison that gets to a shorter set of criteria. Um, and, and I'm willing to take it on myself or if someone wanted to work with me to narrow it down, I would be happy. But I just think a small subgroup into coming back. I mean, I can also work with just Margaret to narrow it down. So I'm opening it up for any thoughts if people had a chance to look at it when I resent it. It looks like no. So I will volunteer um, and send it out again. Um, so you make sure you have it. And then what I'll do is come back with a suggested shorter set. And I, I what I've been looking at is 
an earlier version from some other school projects and what what they did. Um, and I, of course, will talk with the Donesco group to make sure we're not missing a piece. Because I think one of the things we're going to, the issues we've already raised is phasing, you know, how long will a phase take and a duration, there will be some distinct differences between ad reno and new on that, but then on new on what what extent we have to do site work, what extent we have to do something like parking and traffic. So trying to figure out which rows will really at least look different across these four options would be my goal. It's it's yeah. I also think we we developed that list before the net zero subcommittee was formed. And right. I think it, it would be really helpful to share that with them um, if there's time even next week and sort of talk about priorities and, and ratings with that group, because that that was sort of a little bit of a, uh, <laughs> a brain dump list. I think it's the right technical term. No, and I think that's right, Margaret. And I actually was, when I was looking at our rows, I thought a separate set that would just say evaluating the two systems because mm -hmm. on it's hard, the bill, any of the buildings could have either of the systems we're talking about. So, you know, having a separate set on making a decision on whether we're going ground source or air source. So a set of criteria would be good for that as well. Yeah, definitely. I see Rupert is nodding his head. So, and I know Rupert, when you looked at this, you said some of the things didn't feel grouped right, quite right to you. You know, what's a building and what's a site and what's, so that's looking at it then with two sets of eyes. Some of it is the internal systems. Anything else anyone else would like to raise? So we put out the schedule that I uh, sent to everyone on the every two week, actually is the one we came up with in January. And the one uncertainty was in May, the Friday would have been Memorial Day weekend. So we talked about meeting instead of on a Wednesday. And I know at least one committee member saying three meetings in June is gonna be difficult for them. They won't be physically in the country. And I think we put three as a possibility because um, that's where we have to look at the document and then we have to take a vote to submit. So I think as we go through April and part of May, we'll have a better sense of how much time we need in June, whether it's one, whether it's two meetings. And the other um, thing we heard at the last meeting on the PDP that everyone would like to get as much as they could earlier to read it. And so I think one request may be if there are certain chapters or parts of this report that will be prepared earlier um, and can be read so we don't get the entire document all at once. So I think trying to figure out how we get, honor the getting it soon enough that we can actually read it, um, but meeting our deadline of having to vote on it. So I think we can, we can work through trying to figure out the logistics of that. I'm not seeing any, other, you know, I posted this as a two hour meeting thinking that it would probably be a lot shorter. Um, but if I don't see any other questions or um, hands up, I'm going to open it up for public comments. I think I went through the agenda probably quicker than I meant to do, but um, do it. So I, is that all right with the committee at this point to turn to the public? Okay, we've got it. So anyone in the public who would like to speak or make a comment? Um, I'm not sure whether you can hear me. I think you can. Yes. Hi, Bruce, um, you have joined us. I, uh, um, after the last meeting, um, uh, Chris Riddle and Rudy Perkins and I had a fairly long conversation about the net zero, but more specifically, uh, trying to understand uh, ground source heat pump and air source heat pump uh, options. I think that Chris had asked questions about why the ground source heat pump uh, um, was was outside the made budget, and we didn't know whether that was the entire system or just the the well system, uh, the, the 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 ground connection part of the ground source system. And anyway, following that, I uh, I put together a fairly lengthy uh, um, summary document comparing the two uh, system options as best I could, 
and included in that was a uh, basically a cost comparison uh, that tried to understand the premium that you would have to uh, pay in PV to offset the uh, functional performance difference between a, a ground connection and an air connection. Um, and I, I guess my question is, um, I know Kathy that I've sent it to you and to Jonathan, but I don't know whether anybody else has seen it. And uh, my question or is, is, is more of a request is would it be possible for the uh, entire um, uh, net zero group to have seen that document before next Wednesday, because of course I'll have a whole bunch of questions related to whether that document is useful or not, how uh, valuable it is to you as a committee to uh, forming your understandings and engagements and questioning of Denisco and possibly even, and, and actually not possibly, but certainly from Denisco's point of view, there are three or four assumptions in that spreadsheet that I put together. Um, and I don't think I provided the spreadsheet, but I will so that you can check the formulations and so forth if you choose um, uh, as to how my uh, calculation was, uh, was, was completed because it seemed to me that for the systems we were talking about that something in the vicinity, well, it varied obviously between whether you, how much you attributed the cost of a support structure for a PV system that would cover the the increment of uh, uh, the, the extra size of the PV system that will be necessary to offset the performance difference between the two um, uh, systems, um, whether that's going to be sitting on a roof or whether it's going to be sitting on a much more expensive support structure, obviously expect, uh, 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 accounts for a fair difference. My calculation was around a quarter of a million dollars it would cost to cover the difference uh, in PV between the performance differences between the, the air source and the ground source system. Um, and I don't know what the cost of the, the uh, what the cost of the PV, uh, what the cost of the air source system over uh, the ground source system over the air source system will be, but that seems to be clearly going to be discussed on uh, next week. So um, I would like to uh, be assured that um, all parties would have had a chance to look at that. So when the public comment came next week, um, it wouldn't be um, a surprise. I think that's all I need to say. I think, thank you, Bruce. And just so everyone in the public knows, if you send in a document with questions or information, I am forwarding it right away to the Danisco team. So it's, it doesn't just sit in, in, in my inbox. Um, and one of the presentations next week with the group we have that's been doing modeling is going to address these issues about net zero and the costs. So we can share the document, Bruce, but I think it's also important that we look at what we're getting directly from the estimating team, because some of those questions are going to be answered next week, or at least preliminary answered. So yes, we, we can share that document. Are there any other public comments? So one of the things I just wanted to say, uh, oh, two, we do, two more. We do have one more, yes. or two yeah. more. OK. Bringing in um, Chris Riddle. OK, thank you. trying to bring in Chris Riddle. There he comes. Okay, okay Chris, you, you're here. You, you can welcome Chris. Um, if you're talking, we can't hear you. It looks like he's unmuted, Sean, but I'm- Yeah, we can't hear him though. We can't hear you. Why don't I bring in um, Maria Kopecky? Oh, there he goes, okay. Okay, Chris, are you there? Yep, I'm here. Okay, hi, Chris. Um, a few, well, two questions, really. Um, uh, sort of, this one follows up on what Bruce said, 
Um, is the is the intent is Denisco's intent that the uh, geothermal well field be contracted separately, similar to the uh, PV? And if that is that the reason why it's carried below the line, that's a question. Um, uh, there uh, another one is um, there's another big variable in addition to whether it's geothermal or ground source or air source. Um, and it's what, what the distribution within the building is. It can the two big alternatives are: is it hydronic or is it um, uh, refrigerant? Is, is a hydronic or refrigerant the means for trans moving energy around inside the building? Um, that's a question. And the third question is: um, well, let's see. Uh, I may if I had read the whole PDP, which I haven't. Maybe the answer is there, but. Um, do, does does NISCO plan to give us a uh, a description of what the downsides of renovation are re relative to new construction? Do we, do we have a a bulleted, bulleted list of what what would be the consequences of using doing renovation uh, as far as uh, edu educational needs and so forth are concerned? What's the upsides and downsides of renovation? And uh, lastly, is a second curb cut through the middle school? possibly a consideration you it's physically possible to connect the the west parking lot from, from wildwood to uh the middle school parking lot um and trying to keep the tennis courts alive it's um uh, it might be somewhat of a challenge but is that is that would that be one of the considerations one of the options the alternatives those are my questions thank you thank you chris um donna i see your hand is up you know we're gonna are you trying to re Maybe you didn't yeah. mean to have it up. Well, I'm not sure. So I, 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 I think we're just taking in all we're the just comments. Taking yeah, just receiving okay, them. Just, just wanted to make sure. Thank you. Yep. Okay. So thank you, Chris. And, and those questions have been recorded. And M Maria was had her hand up. Yes? Yep, she's here. And then, okay. Welcome, Maria. Hi there. Um, so uh, I... I uh, want to join Bruce in, in requesting that the materials that are going to be discussed and the work that has been done since the last meeting be made available prior to the meeting on Tuesday. And so in other words, not, not to release it on and post it for the public on Monday and for, for, for that matter, for other committee members um, on, on Monday. But if that can be put out today so that people have time to read through it and digest it so we can have um, a better sense of what we're talking about when we're going in. That would be very helpful. Um, and I have a, a particular question about when we will be seeing and when who will be developing and when will the pricing narrative that's going to be submitted to AM Fogarty going to be created and when will we, you be talking about that as a committee um, and the time frame for having the the uniform at cost estimate from AM Fogarty presented. That's obviously going to make a big difference um, and be very helpful in making any kind of decisions and about ground sourced versus air sourced, all sorts of things. So when is that going to be made available? Um, I also saw at, on the agenda for the meeting on Tuesday, possibly taking a vote about ground versus air sourced. So I hope that's not the case because there's obviously a lot that this committee hasn't talked about and that zero committee hasn't talked about. So I'm hoping that that is, um, that is an error. Thank you. Thanks, Maria. And I think there was one more, is that right? Sean? There aren't any, are any hands up right now. Okay, so Rudy had had his hand up, but maybe he took it down. Okay, thank, thank you everyone. Um, the uh, Danisco team has heard all the questions and the repeated request to get materials as much in advance as we can. And I just wanna assure everyone, I. I did the agenda for next week, just on this question of a vote. I put it there was a question mark 
um, just on a, and it, that committee is just an advisory committee and we would bring anything back. But if we're not ready, we won't take a vote. Um, we're still in a gathering information. And I was informed by Donesco that there's no need to make a decision about this yet. So we don't, there's no rush to, understanding the implications is gonna be more important than making a decision right away. So I think we are ready to adjourn. Um, if, uh, unless I see any final comments and Jonathan is chair of the net zero committee. So I'm gonna let you run next, the next committee, <laughs> Jonathan completely on what will be likely be a much more technical discussion um, before we can get to something that people like me can completely understand. So it would, it, it will be great. So thank you all for joining us this morning and moving on to what I think will be the next much more exciting, I found it all exciting phase when we're actually looking at some designs of buildings and it's gonna feel like a real school to us as we're narrowing on which of these four choices we think is the best. So I wish you all a happy weekend and declare the meeting adjourned at 9.32. Thank you.